is our chief foreign affairs correspondent. She joins us now from Washington. Larry, good morning to you. Good morning. I know that you're getting some new details now. What do you know? Well, what we've learned is, uh, you know, a lot more about this city where Osama bin Laden was killed and this ground operation was conducted against the compound. This is not the cave that many people thought bin Laden was hiding out in, in some remote area of the border. This is, in fact, a, a, a fairly modern city, 24-hour power. It's very congested. Um, there's over 120,000 people that live there. But the most significant fact... Um, that is that it is crawling with Pakistani military. It is home to the Pakistani Military Academy, the only training academy for Pakistani officers in the army. It is also home to a number of um, regimental centers, like the biggest uh, medical regiment in, for the Pakistani army and their hospital. And, um, you know, people like uh, the former Pakistani president, um, Pervez Musharraf, went through that military training academy. The current chief of the army, um, Ashraf Kayani, who is the top military official in charge of, uh, you know, all operations in Pakistan. He was there. He went through this military academy for his training, and he was there just four days ago addressing cadets. So everyone that I've been speaking to in Pakistan is surprised that this is where Osama bin Laden was found because there is such a significant military presence there. The Pakistani intelligence services also have a presence there. They are, uh, of course, in, in all of Pakistan's major cities. And uh, so the picture the picture that's emerging here is one um, that definitely raises the question of how Pakistan, um, Pakistani government and senior officials inside the military could not have known that Osama bin Laden was there when they have so many people there. It's also a, next to a lot of training grounds for Kashmiri militants. It only has, um, you know, a few routes through. This is not a place that's easy to escape from um, in a pinch, is what Pakistanis tell me, because there are three main routes only through the city. So. There is surprise all around that this is where bin Laden was found. However, I will say that a number of top U.S. officials, both in the CIA and on the military side, who have been involved in the hunt for bin Laden, have told me tonight they never believed that he was in a remote area. They always thought that he was in a city. And, um, and so they are not surprised to find that uh, Osama bin Laden was sheltering in a compound with 24-hour power and, you know, all the, the amenities of life that we're used to and not um, eating nuts and berries in, in some cave. And, Lara, for the better part of 10 years, we've been talking about the war on terror or this fight against terror with this death is this mission accomplished no not even close to mission accomplished i think the the simplest way to put it um, is that you you can't win this fight without killing osama bin laden to say that it's not important is just not true but on the other hand killing osama bin laden doesn't mean that you've won it doesn't mean that it's over he this osama bin laden is this spiritual leader of um, a jihadist philosophy that has reached every corner of the globe and um, and that can never be underestimated. He has followers the length and breadth of the world. And that's why, in fact, um, protection has been stepped up at U.S. Uh, military bases. An order was sent out early this morning, um, uh, Sunday morning, to say that force protection levels need to be stepped up. Even in Pakistan, um, security alerts are being issued because of the retaliation that's feared. I mean, Osama bin Laden has followers all over the world. And um, al-Qaeda has significant leaders in other parts of the world, in Yemen, for example, who pose a significant threat to the United States, there's a lot, a long way to go still. And Lara, um, with this that war in is mind, far from and, over. And with that in mind, should we expect some sort of retaliation from al-Qaeda? You know, um, we've been told Bob Orr, our correspondent, has been in touch with the FBI and other officials um, and, and other reporters at CBS. There is no known plot at this point that anyone is talking about, um, but you, you know, the, there is no bigger guy for them. I mean, he is the man. And um, if, if, they, if, if anyone's death would be avenged, it would be his. Al-Qaeda have shown a pattern in the past. When um, they've lost major leaders, there have been retaliatory attacks. And, um, and they're patient. You know, it doesn't mean that you're going to see a terrorist attack tomorrow. It doesn't mean that it's going to be one next week. But there, um, it, it is, uh, it's probably a, a, you know, um, a reasonable assumption um, to, to assume that right now they're looking for ways 
um, to avenge the death of Osama bin Laden. And, uh, and you know, a clearer picture is going to emerge in the weeks and months ahead. But uh, th this is, you know, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And one thing that Al Qaeda has demonstrated is extreme patience. You know, they don't even consider the war in Afghanistan to be anything more than one significant battle in this war. And, and it is a global war, and it is, you know, the end state for them is an Islamic world in which Western values, American values, democracy, freedom, none of that has a place. And, um, and they have demonstrated time and again that they're not only willing to wait it out, but this is a fight to the death for them. All righty, in Washington this morning, Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent Lara Logan. Lara, thank you.